zone thermostat. The total volume of air supply to each zone remains constant. However, the supply air temperature varies depending upon the load. Okay. So, remember that this is a constant volume system. So, we are keeping the volumetric flow rate, total volumetric flow rate constant, but varying the supply air temperature. Okay. So, let me show the schematic of this system. So, as I mentioned uh, here, this is your supply uh, air fan, okay, supply fan, okay. some amount of recirculated air and some amount of outdoor air are uh, mixed okay. and uh, the supply air fan then splits this uh, flow into uh, two streams okay. and these two streams flow through two ducts, that is why you call it as dual duct, this is one duct, this is another duct. Okay. In duct 1, you have a cooling and humidification coil that means air flowing through duct 1 is cooled and humidified okay, to about 13 degrees centigrade. Whereas, in the duct 2, you have a heating coil, HC stands for heating coil. Okay. So, the air flowing through duct 2 is heated to about 35 to 45 degrees centigrade. Okay. So, in one duct, you have a hot air at about 45 degrees centigrade, in another duct, you have cold air at about 13 degrees centigrade and these uh, hot and cold air are mixed before each zone, for example, zone 1. Okay. Depending upon its load, they are mixed in what is known as a mixing box okay. and a constant volumetric flow rate of this uh, mixed air is supplied to this zone. Okay. Similarly, for zone 2, zone 3, etcetera. Right? So, what we are doing essentially is we are cooling, uh, cooling and heating air in two different streams and we are mixing the air in different proportions depending upon the load of that particular zone and we are supplying that air at a constant volumetric flow rate to each zones. Okay. So, remember that here the volumetric flow rate remains constant, but the temperature, supply temperature is varied. How this is varied? This is varied by varying the position of the mixing box okay. and this is in turn controlled by the zone thermostat. Okay. And the written air is uh, uh, sent back to the system using a written air duct. Okay. So, this is a dual duct constant volume system. Then we also uh, can have a dual duct variable air volume system. So, as the name implies here, the temperature is kept constant, but the volume is varied. Okay. How the volume is varied? These systems are similar to dual duct constant volume systems with the only difference that instead of instead of maintaining constant flow rates to each zone, the mixing boxes reduce the air flow rate as the load on the zone drops. Okay. So, this is the difference between uh, dual duct variable air volume and dual duct constant volume systems. Using dual duct systems, it is possible to provide cooling in some zones and heating in other zones simultaneously. Okay. So, for example, zone 1 can be cooled and zone 2 can be heated at the same time. Okay. This is possible in the dual duct systems because we have two separate ducts through which cold and hot air are flowing separately. Okay. This is not possible in single duct systems. However, these systems occupy more space obviously because you have two ducts, okay, one for hot air and one for cold air. Okay. So, so, the space uh, requirement is higher. Now, let us look at outdoor air control in all air systems. Okay. This refers to both single duct as well as dual duct systems. In all air systems, a subsystem controls the amount of outdoor air by controlling the position of exhaust, recirculated and outdoor air dampers. Okay. So, there is a separate system which controls the proportions of these uh, exhaust, recirculated and outdoor air damp, air flow rates. Okay. And uh, this system maintains a minimum amount of outdoor air which is about 10 to 20 percent of supply air flow rate as required for ventilation when the outdoor air is too cold or too warm. Okay. That means, what the subsystem does is when the outdoor air is very cold, let us say it is less than minus 24 degree centigrade, uh, less than minus 30 degree centigrade or when it is too warm, that means, it is uh, greater than let us say about 24 degree centigrade. Okay. Then, it supplies a minimum amount of outdoor air to the conditioned space. This minimum amount will be about 10 to 20 percent depending upon the application and this minimum amount is required for ventilation. Okay. So, this is uh, maintained as long as the temperature of the outdoor air is too cold or too warm. Okay. However, what happens is uh, the amount of outdoor air can be increased progressively as the outdoor air or temperature increases from minus 30 degree centigrade to about 13 degree centigrade. Okay. And what you can do is you can maintain 100 percent outdoor air 
when the outdoor air temperature is between 13 degrees to about 24 degrees centigrade. Okay. So, this leads to a great energy consumption. Okay. So, what uh, it means is that as I said when the temperature is less than minus 30 or when the temperature is greater than uh, plus 24, you have to provide a minimum amount of outdoor air. Okay. However, when the temperature is between minus 30 to plus 13, okay, then you can progressively incre increase the amount of outdoor air. Okay. And when the outdoor air temperature is between 13 degrees and 24 degrees centigrade, then you can supply all outdoor air for conditioning the space. Okay. That means, you do not have to uh, run the cooling system or heating system when the temperature is between uh, 13 to 24 degrees centigrade. All that you have to do is you have to run the supply air fan. Okay. Thereby, the energy consumption of the, of the cooling and heating plant is completely eliminated. Okay. So, this gives rise to large savings in energy. Okay. Of course, this is possible only when the outdoor temperatures are lie with, be within these ranges. Okay. Now, let us uh, look at uh, advantages of all air systems. All air systems uh, offer a potential for energy conservation by utilizing the outdoor air effectively as I have mentioned just now. And temperature and relative humidity can be maintained very precisely. That means, temperature can be maintained within plus or minus 0 0.15 degrees centigrade and uh, relative humidity can be maintained within plus or minus 0 0.5 percent, okay, very close control. And with dual ducts, simultaneous cooling and heating is possible. And uh, all air systems ensures good room air distribution and ventilation under all conditions of load. Okay. So, the indoor air quality will be good when we are using all air systems. And noise in the conditioned space can be minimized by locating the plant away from the condition space. The plant includes the supplier and, and return air fans. So, thereby the noise generated by all these equipment uh, need not be transmitted to the condition space. So, you can maintain low noise in the condition space. And uh, another very important advantage is that these systems require very little or no maintenance inside the condition space. Okay. This is in comparison to all water systems. However, uh, all air systems also have certain disadvantages. They generally occupy more building space compared to all water systems. As a result, retrofitting may not be pos possible always. And what are the applications of all air systems? They are applied for both comfort as well as industrial air conditioning and they are used in buildings that require individual control of multiple zones such as office buildings, classrooms, laboratories, hospitals, hotels, ships, etc. And they are also used in applications that require close control of condition space such as clean rooms, computer rooms, operation theatres, etc. Now, let us look at all water systems. In all water systems, cold or hot water is a fluid used in the thermal distribution system. Depending upon the number of pipes used, the all water systems can be classified into a two pipe system or a four pipe system. A two pipe system is used for either cooling only or heating only application, but cannot be used for simultaneous cooling and heating. And in uh, all water systems, a pressure relief valve PRV is installed in the water line for maintaining balance flow rate. Okay. So, let me show a typical uh, two pipe system. So, this is a two pipe all water system. It consists of a heating or cooling coil where water is either uh, heated or cooled depending upon the requirement and depending upon the season. Then it consists of uh, a supply water line and a return water line. Okay. So, through the supply water line either hot water or cold water dep flows depending upon the requirement and a pump is used for circulating the water. Okay. So, the water is cooled or heated to a particular temperature okay. and uh, this water at the this particular temperature is supplied to room units kept, uh, kept inside different zones. Okay. These are uh, the zone or room units. Okay. So, the hot or cold water flows through these uh, room units uh, and as it flows through, it exchanges uh, energy with the conditioned air in the space. Okay. So, there is heat transfer between the uh, unit and the conditioned air as the water flows through the room unit. Okay. And the capacity of each zone is controlled by controlling the flow rate of the uh, hot or cold water. Okay. So, you have flow control valves here. Using the flow control valves, you can control the flow rate to the conditioned space, thereby you can control the 
required capacity okay and the flow control valves are controlled by the zone thermostats okay you can see that there are zone thermostats which are connected to the flow control valves if the load is less then the flow control valve is closed and less amount of water is supplied to the room unit okay and as I said a PRV a pressure uh, relief valve is uh, required for balancing the flow rate right. A four pipe system consists of two supply pipelines one for cold water and one for hot water okay. In a two pipe system we just had one supply line and one uh, return line whereas in a four pipe system you have two supply lines and two return lines. Okay, two supply lines are for uh, one for cold water and one for hot water and the two return water pipelines carry water to uh, heating coil and cooling coil okay that is why you call it as four pipe system. The cold and hot water are mixed in required proportion depending upon the zone load in a four pipe system and the mixed water is supplied to the conditioned space. The return water is split into two streams one stream flows to the heating coil while the other flows other flows to the cooling coil. Now heat transfer between the cold and hot water and the conditioned space takes place either by convection, conduction or radiation or a combination of these. The cold or hot water may flow through bare pipes located in, th in the conditioned space or one of the following equipment can be used for transferring unit, uh, heat okay. That, that, that means the room units can be either a fan coil unit, a convector or a radiator. Fan coil units for domestic applications are available in the air flow ranges of range of 100 to 600 litre per second with multi speed high efficiency fans. A fan coil unit may also consist of heating coil in addition to the cooling coil. So, let me show the schematic of a typical fan coil unit. Okay, this fan coil, fan coil unit consists of only a cooling coil okay, that means it is used only for cooling purposes. So, you can see that you have a housing here okay, this is a housing which consists of uh, an air filter okay, and a fan and a condensate water drain line and drain tray okay, this is a tray. Then you have the cooling coil here okay, so this is your fin tube cooling coil and these are the connections for cold water okay, cold water enters uh, for example through this one and leaves through this or it enters through this and leaves through this okay. And the cool uh, as the name implies the cooling coil is typically a fin plate fin and tube type cooling coil. So, the fan draws the warm air from the conditioned space okay, the warm air from the conditioned space flows into the fan coil unit, it is filtered as it flows through the air filter and this filtered air flows over the cooling coil. As it flows over the cooling coil, it gets cooled and dehumidified and the cold air is supplied to the conditioned space where it takes care of the uh, sensible and latent cooling loads okay. Since uh, there, there could be uh, latent load so there could be condensation of water you have to provide a drain tray here and you have to provide a drain line for draining out the condensate water okay. So, this is a typical uh, fan coil unit and uh, in uh, you can also have in addition to a cooling coil you can also have a heating coil for example you can have a heating coil here okay this is a heating coil. In addition to the cooling coil for a better control or for all air air conditioning and this heating coil in a two pipe system will be an electrical heater and in a four pipe system this is a hot water coil okay. Now, the capacity of the fan coil unit is controlled either by controlling the water flow rate or the supply air flow rate or both. The supply air flow rate can be controlled by controlling the fan speed. In a typical fan coil unit separate arrangement must be made for ventilation. Unit ventilator is a fan coil unit with a provision for supplying treated outdoor air. As you have seen in a fan, fan coil unit there is no provision for supplying the outdoor air. So, ventilation uh, is not taken care of if you are using a fan coil unit alone. So, there must be a separate provision for providing outdoor air. That means, you can have a separate provision like uh, now open the windows or you can rely on infiltration or you can have some openings in the walls through which outdoor air can enter into the conditioned space okay. So, this arrangement must be made separate from the fan coil unit. However, there are certain units called as unit ventilators which are a combination of a fan coil unit and a ducting system where through which treated outdoor air can be allowed into the condition space okay such a unit is called as unit ventilator okay if you are using a unit ventilator you don't have to make separate arrangement for ventilation 
Now a convector consists of a fin tube coil through which hot or cold fluid flows. Heat transfer between the coil and surrounding air takes place by natural convection only, hence no fans are used for moving air. Convectors are very widely used for heating application, but they are very, very rarely used for cooling application. Sometimes the convectors are used in cold storages, but they are not uh, rarely used for air conditioning applications for cooling. Okay. In a radiator, as the name implies, the heat transfer between the coil and the surrounding air is primarily by radiation. Okay. The radiation heat transfer is the primary mode. However, there will also be heat transfer by natural convection. Okay. And radiators are mainly used for uh, heating application. However, nowadays radiant panels are also used for cooling applications also. Now, let us look at uh, advantages of uh, all water systems. All water systems occupies considerably less space because you do not have to have any uh, air ducts, you simply have to handle water. Since water has very high density, the required volumetric flow rate for a given capacity will be very small. So, as you know, the size of the water pipelines will be very, very small compared to air ducts. Hence, the required uh, space is very less. So, you can easily use them in retrofitting. That means, you can uh, apply the all water systems to existing buildings. This is a central system, however, they are, these systems also offer individual room control. Okay. For example, in a particular room, a cooling is not required, he can simply switch off the uh, fan of that particular fan coil unit. Okay. So, it provides individual room control at the same time, it is also provides the advantages of a central system. And simultaneous cooling and heating is possible with four pipe systems, okay, with uh, hot water flowing through uh, two pipes and hot water flowing through, uh, cold water flowing through two other pipes. You can have uh, cooling in one zone and heating in another zone. And since the temperature of hot water required for space heating is generally small, it is possible to use solar or waste heat for heating. So, these are the advantages. Now, what are the disadvantages of uh, all water systems? These systems require higher maintenance, particularly in the conditioned space, okay, because you have to have, uh, you have to maintain the fan coil unit in the conditioned space and you may also have to maintain the drain pipe, condensate draining and all that. Okay. So, as a result, the required maintenance is higher. And draining of condensate water can be messy. Okay. For example, if the drain water uh, line gets blocked, then the water will spill over into the conditioned space. Okay. So, this has to be taken care of. Then it is difficult to uh, ensure required ventilation on, under all conditions because unlike in air water systems, in all water systems, most of the time if you are particularly if you are using a fan coil unit, you are relying on uh, natural methods for ventilation. For example, if you are using uh, open windows or some openings in the walls for providing outdoor air, then it is not uh, certain okay, because it depends on the wind and stack effect. So, the amount of outdoor air provided will not remain constant always. Okay, so, this is the disadvantage of all water systems. And control of space humidity during summer could be difficult. Okay, so, you cannot uh, get very precise control over space humidity unlike 